Hello everyone once again welcome back dear students we had started the novel to sir with love by e r brethwaite in the first part we saw the theme of the novel summary of the novel and major and minor characters in part 2 we saw the short summary of chapter 17 means synopsis of chapter 17 in this video we shall see the detailed explanation of chapter 17 of novel to sir with love so let us start Before this once again I want to remind you that the questions on this section will be memory based means there will be no passage no extra given in the exam so you have to keep all the answers of the questions in mind so keep all the points in mind so let us begin We have seen that Ricky Brathwaite the narrator in this novel accepted the job of a teacher in Greenslade school The students in this school were notorious, mischievous, disrespectful, ill-mannered and troublesome. They harassed and troubled Brathwaite. They tortured him physically and mentally. At first, Brathwaite was also rough towards the students, but when he saw that there is no change in the attitude and behavior of students, he changed his own behavior and attitude. He applied some innovative techniques and styles in his teaching style. He started treating those students with respect means as elders he started addressing the girl students as miss and he told that the students should address him as sir he realized the psychology of the students he knew the needs of the students and he started taking those students field trips excursions museums and theaters where they had never been before soon there was a change in the behavior and the attitude of the students they became matured they became well mannered they began to take interest in learning education became learner centered and the positive changes were seen in the behavior of the students in the progress of the students in chapter 17 of this novel ER Brathwaite tells about the half yearly report of the students council and how he was satisfied to see the performance and presentation of his students now we shall see the explanation of this chapter 17 the half yearly report of the students council was on november 15th this was one of the important days in the calendar of greenslade school Brathwaite had heard about this program but it was his first time to attend this program in this school this program was held every year but it was brathwaite's first time to attend this program he was very much anxious and eager about this program why because his students had no basic academic skills they had no manners Now he wanted to see the performance and progress of his students. He was going to witness this program for the first time, so he was very much anxious. The program was arranged, presented and controlled by the students only. He observed the appearance and activities of his students. All the students were smartly dressed and polished. Miss Joseph and Denham were the important officials for this occasion. They had allocated the tasks to the students in a very business like way. They had chalked out the program very neatly. At 10 am the bell was rung. All the students assembled in the auditorium. There was no assembly that day. On the stage Mr Florian the headmaster was sitting. Besides him Miss Joseph and Denham were sitting Denham and Miss Joseph are the students from Brathwaite's class Miss Joseph means see here Brathwaite addressed all the girls in his class as miss so here is Miss Joseph actually her name is Moira Joseph but she is addressed here as Miss Joseph At first Mr Florian addressed the school he gave a long speech He emphasized on the aims and policy of the school and of the important contribution each child could make for the development of those aims. He praised the students for their contribution for doing so. He insisted on the improvement in conduct, 
cleanliness and the pursuit of knowledge when brethwit listened to the speech of the headmaster he realized that this man miss mr florian was in no way remote from his school it means he was very much attached to these students he also noticed that he is a very responsible person he is a good administrator then mr florian wished success to the students and left the stage all the students gave tremendous applause after his speech then miss joseph stood up and gave a short explanation of the council's purpose and its activities she said that each class would report through its representatives on the studies pursued during the half year which began after easter from each class there will be a representative for every subject and those representatives will speak on some topic means from the course book what they have studied when all the classes had completed their reports a panel of teachers would be invited to occupy the stage and answer questions from the body of the hall on matters arising out of the various reports nobody knew who the teachers in this panel will be after this introductory address of ms joseph the reports began the reports began with the lowest or youngest class first there were mainly 12 year old students who had joined the school the previous summer most of these students were shy and rather frightened at standing up before the entire school still they managed it creditably the youngest class students reported first class after class was represented and it was obvious that with each succeeding term there was a marked development in their ability to express themselves throughout all the reports the emphasis was on what they understood rather than on what they were expected to learn now it was the turn of brethwaite's class when the turn of his class came he sat up anxiously then he took the proceedings he called out the names of the representatives together with the subjects on which they would report how was the list see here what you would report on arithmetic sapiano will present on natural study miss peck and jackson will speak on geography miss dare and furman on physiology miss dot on history denham on pitchian games and miss joseph on domestic science Brethwaite was very much pleased and proud to see the confident courtesy with which Denham used the term miss in addressing each of the senior girls. He felt sure that this would be a very good example for the younger classes. As their names were called, they walked up to the stage and took their seats with commendable gravity. Then Miss Joseph gave a short address. She said that all mankind is interdependent though there are differences in geographical location color races and creed then she called on potter potter spoke on arithmetic potter went on to speak of the work they had done on weights and measures of the relationship between the kilogram and the pound the meter and the foot he said that throughout the world one or other of those two methods was either in use or understood and that it was a symbol of the greater understanding which was being accomplished between peoples the next presentation was of sapiano he spoke of the study the class had made of pests especially black rot on wheat ball weevil on cotton and the colorado beetle on potatoes he showed how many countries had pooled their knowledge and results of research on the behavior breeding habits and migration of these pests and were gradually reducing the threat they represented to these important products then the next presentation was of miss peck and jackson they divided the report on geography between them first jackson spoke on the distribution of mineral deposits and vegetable produce over the earth's surface he said that the country rich in one is often deficient in the other and therefore every country is dependent on other country it means he proved that the interchange and interdependence is inevitable miss peck dealt with human relationship she stressed the problem facing the post war world for feeding 
clothing and housing its population she also made a reference to the thousands of refugees stateless and unwanted and to the efforts and programs of unicef then formans name was called perman gave a signal to someone off stage some arrangement had been set up and there was a human skeleton hanging from a hook screwed into the top of its skull gently revolving at the end of a cord seeing the skeleton there was a comic relief among all everybody present in the auditorium was anxious what forman is going to do with the skeleton forman's voice was clear he was precise and he had a strong sense of the dramatic he calmly told that this was a female skeleton but he is not sure that this skeleton is of a french woman greek woman chinese woman or german woman also it is not sure that this woman was black or white or mixture of both from the example of this skeleton he proved that basically all the people are same the trimmings might be different but the foundations were all laid out according to the same blue print this was a very nice and wonderful presentation after this it was the turn of miss dare to report on physiology she spoke about the problems which all humanity has to face in terms of sickness and disease and of the advantages gained by interchange of knowledge advice and assistance after four months presentation her presentation was of an anti climax still she continued to speak after miss dress report miss dot reported on the period of history the class had studied the reformation in england she told of the struggles of men of independent spirit against clerical domination and of their efforts to break from established religious traditions The last presentation was of Denham. His report was a bit of a shock. He severely criticized the general pattern of pitch and games. He emphasized on limitations of space obtaining and the effect of that limitation on their games activities. He complained that the pity was ill-conceived and pointless and the routine monotonous. He said that there is no advantage in doing pity. A jolly good game is far better. This was not the opinion of Denham alone. It was the opinion of all the students and therefore when Denham criticized PT all the students were very happy and they cheered him loudly. Thus all the reports were over. Then Denham called two children at random from the audience and asked them to write the name of each teacher including the headmaster. on the slip of a paper those slips were folded and placed in a hat juggled vigorously and then withdrawn one by one the names of three teachers were called mr weston mrs daily ones and miss yupima phillips this panel of three teachers was selected to answer the questions of the students this question answer session began the questions were mostly from the two top classes probably because the younger children were either too timid or too uniformed to formulate their questions when denham asked some questions about pt mr weston a senior teacher could not satisfy him fully his answers were quite ridiculous in the face of denham's blank criticisms and formal adroit questioning He found himself completely nonplussed and tried to bluster his way out with a show of offended dignity. He could not effectively support the pity exercises for which he was partly responsible as having any definite physical advantage. But this time Miss Yupima Phillips whom all considered friendly and brainless now proved to be the coolest and the best informed of the three teachers on the stage. then he had complained about pt and asked why it was compulsory then he was a trained boxer he insisted that such exercises were only advantageous if practiced daily and for more sustained periods he asserted that pt twice weekly for 20 minutes was a waste of time at this miss phillips reminded the school that 
every subject including pitch and games had been carefully considered and fitted into the teaching timetable so that each student received maximum benefit from it the school with its limited facilities must be considered in terms of the greatest good for the greatest number and it would be beyond anyone's powers to please anybody then she fixed her innocent eyes at denham and said that some of you are fortunate in your own fine physical development and do not really need the few meager helpings of pt and games which this school can offer and told that there are others for whom these programs are ideally suited but denham was not to be put off by these sugary remarks he rose in reply he asked why do we have to do pt why don't they take only the kids who need it instead of pt we should be allowed to play games like football or others actually this was a poser but she came right back at him she crossed him and she tackled the situation in a very skillful manner she told in him that let us say it is as much an exercise of the mind as it is of the body the whole timetable in this school is meant to help you in the world after you leave here and doing what you are told in spite of not liking it it's a part of the training she said that if we do not want to do anything still we do it means it is an exercise for our mind it is a part of training and we are giving you this training which will be very much helpful to you in the outer world at this answer denham had no point to cross now or complain denham knew that he had been outwitted but he could do nothing about it and sat looking rather rueful when brethwit saw how skillfully miss upima phillips had tackled the situation he began to understand how it was that so slight a creature could cope so effectively with her class After the session Mr Florian the headmaster of the school went on to the stage and closed the proceedings he expressed his pride in all the children and his deep appreciation of their efforts and what was Brethwit's reaction though he did not say anything he was very much proud and very much satisfied to see the performance of his students he was very much happy to see the positive changes in his students thus the chapter 17 ends here in the next video we should study the novel around the world in 80 days so keep watching